happy Saturday night. I'm Aaron with Bowtie Treasures. I'm a Dixieville content creator, and I'm here to demonstrate some chalk paint techniques, have some fun hanging out with you guys, answering questions, and just having a good time this Saturday night. I'm so excited to have you here. As you come in tonight, let us know where you're watching from. Say hi to the group and uh, hope you have an opportunity to take advantage of the links in the description or the comments of this live. And uh, love for you to follow me over on uh, social media, YouTube, Facebook, Instagram, all the good things. Definitely going to be doing some fun techniques tonight, some things that I think will uh, maybe enlighten you or give you some courage to try some different things on your projects. And I'll do my best to walk you through all the different things that I'm doing so you can try them as well. And of course, you may not go as far as I do, but try a couple of them out. See if uh, the products or the techniques can help. And I want to show you that because a lot of the techniques that I used on my latest project, I'm using tonight. I did not do a video on my latest project, so tonight's kind of a makeup for that. So if you have questions, uh, that hopefully that'll help you. And uh, let me show you my latest project. So right here, you will see, this is a, uh, the one on the screen is a wardrobe. It doesn't have any drawers on it, but I used one of Dixie Bell's newest decoupage papers. And uh, that's the damask uh, paper. And uh, I put that on the sides, did a little tearing on it. Kind of looks like cool old vintage wallpaper too. And so I, I uh, wanted to show you that product. Tonight I'm gonna to use a different decoupage paper that Dixie Bell just released. You can use the link in the description of this live to get to those. Find out if there's a retailer in your area or use that to shop around and look at those new products. But if you'll notice the cabinet itself, the technique that's being used on there is kind of an old weathered grungy, maybe grungy might not be the right word, but just vintage um, cottage feeling. So that's the, the style or the look of finish that I'm going with on this piece, but I'm using different colors. So keep in mind that whatever I'm doing tonight, you can swap out for whatever, whatever color combination you want. What I would recommend is that you use the colors from your transfer or that you're gonna use in your stencil for your composition. So that's... Uh, I don't do this a lot, but you can see that I've already started using the decoupage paper on the side of the drawers. I intentionally ripped the paper and kind of left it worn so both sides will have that. And I've done that to almost all the drawers at the, at the end or here in a little bit. I have one more drawer and I'll show you how I did that. So stay tuned for that part and we'll work on that together. This is the uh, lovely decoupage paper. In fact, tonight, let me just turn this off. You can see it in my background. That's the decoupage paper I'm using tonight. This decoupage paper is called Ancient Mud Cloth. And the stencil I'm gonna be using is called Mud Cloth. So I thought that was really great to be able to use both Mud Cloths in the same project. So that's the theme. And the color palette from the decoupage paper is the color palette of my piece tonight. So that's, uh, give you a little bit of a background of what we're doing. I think you'll, you'll kind of see how that's all working together. The piece behind me has already been cleaned with white lightning. I used gray boss and then I put a coat of Dixie Bell's burlap on there. So that burlap is this color right here. I will tell you that last night I'm usually live on my Bowtie Treasures Facebook page Friday nights. 8.30ish around there. I did the far side on my live. So if you want to see that part and kind of the discovery mode, you can go watch that later on, but tonight we're going to continue that. In fact, let me show it to you because this is where we're, this is where we're headed with this technique. Well, my cards all work. So this is the look and you can see the worn weathered. And then I, you can also see that we use this, the stencil already and it's a multicolor stencil. Oh, my camera's getting a little crooked there. You see how there's multiple colors in there. I'm going to show you how to do that. That's all tonight so probably what we'll do is i'll show you the painting technique on the other sides and then we'll do i'm going to do a couple more stencil sections on here so we're going to achieve this look tonight we're also going to show the stenciling and then i'll also show you the decoupage paper i don't some things you're going to need uh, i like to use a larger size squirt bottle because i need to put a volume of water out and the mister bottle is okay but the mister bottle is not strong enough it doesn't 
put enough water out quickly. But you can have a Mr. Bottle if you want to be a little softer with it. But I'm going to keep this Mr. Bottle handy. And then, of course, you need your colors. Now, for me, I'm going to go with my first color that I'm going to use is Gravel Road. And I picked all my colors again based on the decoupage paper. So I looked at my colors and I said, okay, Gravel Road matches that. That way it all kind of ties together. You want it to be unified and, and all coming together. So I'm just going to take a, for this next step, I'm just going to use a, right there. so this is the flat medium. And I like the flat medium because it fits really nice in the eight ounce jar. So that's what we're going to do. So the steps can get a little repetitive. We're going to keep doing them over and over again, all the way down. I'm not going to do all the way. I'm going to kind of work at a section at a time because there's a lot going on. The other thing that you're going to want to have is some kind of uh, damp cloth. And I'll use this for part of the texture. Uh, I've done a little bit of this project technique before on other pieces. And I just love how it all coming together uh, and really creates the weathered weather look so i'm not going to put a ton of paint on here just a little bit just enough to get me going okay and you're just going to have to make sure that you're experimenting or trying it out remember i wet the piece the section first because if you don't it's really going to just be like a dry brush and nothing's really going to be nothing we really want to wipe away so after I paint, I'm going to wet it again because I really want this wet because if it's not wet, this paint will not lift. Let me put my brush down. The more water you have, the easier it's going to lift the paint off. Okay. If you have a rag with lots of texture, that's just going to add to your piece. This piece has kind of like almost a, a rigid look. So that ridges is coming through. That's perfectly fine. Move your rag around. If you want to use anything that has texture, that'll pick up the paint. More water will, will allow for more paint to be picked up. And because we're going to, this is all wet, I'm not too worried about it drying on me. I'm going to go with a medium level or amount of paint. I don't want a lot of it, a lot of the paint there. So if you realize, hey, I'm putting too much on, don't put so much paint on the next time. All right, we're gonna to move to the next section, water it down really good, and then grab your paint. I'm using my stool as my little paint cart. And just quickly get some paint on there. Oh, and by the way, after you're done uh, with the rag, you can go back and actually use your mister and soften the rag texture if you need if you feel like you want to soften it up and you can go back if you have drips and things you don't want so i'm moving quickly i don't necessarily have to but we have a lot to do tonight so if this if you'd rather dab and step back and dab and step back that's fine too i'm, I'm i need to remember not to forget a critical step here in a second Notice how I'm just really just super random, not anything. And I need to get on the back side of this one second. I like to downplay the back side of that. As little or as much paint as you want and keep it wet. And then go in there with the rag. As I mentioned, I used the same, pretty much the same technique as the previous piece I just showed a while ago. But at this step right here that I'm doing, on the other piece, I used vintage duck egg. So you could, if you want to do a cream inspired, gray inspired, whatever you want to do on your piece. And let me just get a little bit more down below. You might want to have a little bit more, we'll call it dirt or darker color down at the bottom. And I actually did on the other piece, I did that. Um, I did some shading and I don't know if I have time to do that tonight, but I've demonstrated shading a lot on my live. So you definitely can go back and see a little bit more about shading. We'll just see where we are in time. 
okay? Now, let me show you one thing that I like to do that adds some extra texture. My squirt bottle, if I just barely pull the trigger, it's almost gonna just like spit. It's the best, best, best way I can describe it. So if I just like literally barely pull the trigger, it's just gonna put little drops of water and if you've ever used watercolor before, it's almost like sprinkling water, uh, water drops on your watercolor. And it, I'm going to show you really close. You guys ready? Hang on. So you can start seeing, do you see the drops, or the spots? That's from me specking. You can use a toothbrush, just speckle some water on it and it will give you those, those drops. So that's another level of texture that you can get with your piece. So just keep an eye on things. If you don't want too much dripping water, then just dab it away. If you want to soften it up, you can mist it again. There's so many ways to get that, that working for you. And so I'm going to get the next color. And that is, we're going to do a wash of buttercream. Now, last night, you can get any container you want. So I just put some buttercream in a container and just poured a little bit of water in there. You're just looking for just kind of a very thin wash. This could be anything, any light color. This could be a, a light cream, a light gray, a gray, a light blue, whatever. Or don't do this step. Again, you, you decide what you want to leave out. All I'm going to do is I want to, I liked, it's hard to see in my picture, but on my previous piece, I actually did this at the top. It's a little harder to see in the picture, but the top is lighter and the bottom is darker. So I want that same look and I'll show you how I do. So I'm just going to remember the first one I painted and then I sprayed to wet. This one's starting wet. So there are two different te techniques. You can use one or the other or, or both or not at all. So this is just about layering and getting uh, that layers of color and texture. So do you see how it's not, I'm not spraying this with water because it's already wet. And you have to determine how far you're going to go down. I'll probably go about a third of the way down and then I'll show you how I'm going to fade this out. Okay. Do you see that? That's, that's a wash. And let me put that to the side. Now I'm going to take my bro my rag and I'm just going to dabble, dab that. More texture, but I'm not wiping it off, okay? I just want more texture. So I'm covering up some of my previous work, but that's okay. Now here's where I'm going to use my rag to blend. Looks like I need to do a little bit of you, want it, you don't want this to dry because you can't, remember, you can't really dab it away if it's dry. So I'm kind of slowly fading this out. I'm using my mister bottle now because I don't want to spray so much heavy water. Move your brush or move your, um, your rag around so it's not creating the same pattern over and over again. And here's where the mister bottle will soften some of those, some of those textures. And you dab as little or as much as you want if it's not giving you the look you want. I also like to go back and hit edges. Let me show you what I'm talking about. You see how there's a buildup of water there? So I like to kind of knock some of that down. I don't want the... Um... But I don't mind some of it being lightly um, dripping. You can do this with whatever color, whatever value you want. And so if I go back to, you see how the top has a lighter tone and the, the, the bottom, I'll actually probably even darken up even more, but I like that gradation, almost ombre wash feel. That's the look I'm going for. So we're gonna leave it just like that. I don't need to heat gun this because by the time I come back to this, it'll be done. It'll be drying. So let's leave that and let's move back. 
but you know how I created this the so this look in the background was done just like I demonstrated once it was dry then I was able to do the stencil work so what I want to do now is demonstrate just to give you the whole picture of everything I want to show you some of the stencil work because I, I have a lot of fun with that and then maybe we'll do some more on the other side etc cetera, etc cetera. We'll, we'll just keep going all right you can see so what I did last night was I actually used the stencil up against the corner so I could keep putting it back in the exact same place you feel like you, you can't keep the stencil exactly where you want then you need to figure out some way to keep it in place so I'll tell you what let me get some painters tape okay I, first thing I'm gonna do rusty nail you might say why'd you pick rusty nail because if you look at the the paper it has kind of a rusty nail look to it so that's kind of that's what I'm doing now for me, when I'm doing stencils, my, my favorite Dixie Bell brush for stencils is the round small because it has a flat, has a flat top, okay? The camera doesn't want to focus on it. Do you see that, how it's flat, it's not rounded? And to me, that's perfect for a stencil. Now you can see what I used up above. So I'm gonna use something a little bit more over here, but what I don't want is I don't want to stencil on this edge. I'm gonna stencil in here okay i'm gonna put my paint down all right so here we're just going to sometimes what i'll do is i'll dab to start with but then i come back and i, I want to swirl it because i it it's going to feel more authentic but it, swirling does or the dabbing does give you almost like a speckled feel so i will use some of that so all i'm trying to do is put some color of the rusty nail on the piece and I think what I'm going to do since I know what happened or how it went down last night I'm not going to lift this off but we'll see I'm going to say, I'm saying that but okay I think the next thing I did was putty I don't want straight up rusty nail so I'm going to go with the same brush into putty and just a little little touch of it put that down and what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna find a place that I didn't put a lot of color and I'm gonna start heavier there and then slowly go over my rusty nail I don't want to wipe the rusty nail away but I'm giving it a kind of a little bit of a dusting so that it's not so intense you're trying to make it look worn and weathered. And one way of doing that is not have your colors to be so intense. Okay. The last color I used on my stenciling. Now keep me, keep in mind, I could do this section, all rusty nail, go down lower, do all rusty nail, but you'll find that when you have your stencil in place, it's oftentimes a better idea not to move it around. So in this one, I've got a little bit of the rusty uh, gravel road. I can, I think it's nice to actually use some of the speckled. So just a few dabs here and there. It'll echo the speckle that we put in the wash. Okay. And if you want to offload that and then still come in and do a little bit of us, a little bit of rubbing in, to give it a little bit of an aged look, that's fine. But I liked how the speckle worked for me last night. Okay, so now we have done the magic. Let's do the reveal. Okay, that's wonderful. This is the kind of stuff that uh, you guys could totally nail. So now we've done up here and you can see there's no hard edge it's soft what do y'all think send me some feedback let me give me some ideas so to me i think the rule of thirds is going to be good one two three and then we could do one down below so how about it let's let's do one more a little lower so what i'm going to do here 
is I'm going to put it in the corner so I, I can kind of rest assured that it's where I want it to be. And we're going to quickly go through those steps, those colors again, resting out first. Get some color on there. And then swirl it around. My plan right now, I don't know if we're going to have time tonight, tonight, but my plan right now is to do this same idea on the drawer front in random locations. So as the drawers are all in, there'll be some places with it, some not. I think that works well. I'm, now I'm going into the, into putty. This is putting a nice uh, layering over the background, over the rusty nail. I'm avoiding the edges. And you can see how you can kind of move quickly. Now I'm back to gravel road. Now that I have all the colors out, I can do that. And here's where I'm going to just dab it. Just like I did a while ago. Random places, if you've got too much paint, wipe it off. And then do some swirling because you want that color to kind of go over the background a little bit. So you have to really um, go with the idea that unless you keep pulling this, like yeah, last night I pulled it off, put it back on, I kept checking it, but now they kind of know what I'm getting. Like I might want to have some more red you can always put it back and kind of step back. In fact, let's do that. You know, if you say, well, didn't, didn't get enough red. Okay, well, let's put it back on there. Remember, I'm using the corner of my piece. I'm gonna grab some more of the rusty nail because I'd like to have a little bit more red, maybe up in this area. And I'm not cleaning, I have not cleaned off this brush yet. It's quite all right to have those colors all working together. Because you're, rub you're really rubbing them off onto the piece, so don't you don't have to feel like you need to clean it off. I think that helped to have a little bit more red pop in there. And you can see now all three sections are done. There's one more thing I want to try just to see if it would work. So you guys get to see some more experimentation with me. Let me bring my camera up. Since this is all dry, I did this last night. I have in my mind that I think it'd be kind of cool to do some gilding wax. So I have brought out, I have decided to give copper a try, okay? So let's use copper. So I think what I'd like to do is just play around with a dusting of copper. So I'm gonna go into the container. So remember, this is oil-based. But I will, I do all my top coating last. It's okay to do copper or gilding wax and then top coat. Just make sure that it dries. So give it a couple days. So what I'm going to do here is I'm just going to swirl a little bit. Just a little bit of copper in some areas. Just to hint. Just to catch the eye. Just to surprise the eye, if you will. So again, here's where I have the stencil right in the corner so I can put it right back. So what I'm doing is that as the light catches this, this will be flat, but this will be shiny. And I think that'll just give it a nice little surprise. Let's try another one a little lower. It might not be catching, picking up on camera so much, but there's so much, there's so many great reds. Uh, let me see if I can do this. Let me put the stencil exactly where it was last night. And let's put some like right in here. So I'm just dabbing and then very light pressure. This is a, this is going to come out looking a little red, but it's going to have a shimmer to it. And that's what I was going, that's what I'm going for. But just, just a hint. Describe it however you want, a dusting. All right, so just a little bit of metallic touches here and there will give it that nice just change of pace, if you will, to make it different. 
Can we paint this one color and call it a day? Totally. Where's the fun in that? So I, what I did was I used uh, the paper, a paper cutter. You can use scissors if you want, if you, but I wanted a nice straight edge. And I cut everything square, and but then I hand tore this part. So all of the ends have a different tear. And I don't normally do, I think we call it the peekaboo drawer, normally do this, but I thought this helped tie the piece together. And I really hadn't thought of a great place to put this on the outside. So this is to me a great place to put it on the inside of the piece. So I, what I use is, what you'll want to use is Dixie Bell's clear coat. And it's a very simple process. And I'm just going to use this, uh, a one inch, a flat small. You can use a chip brush or any brush you want. Let me show you how I do this. So first of all, just give it a quick stir. And because I don't want to have, I don't want to have the whole, um, I don't want to stop here with top coat. I'm going to go ahead and do the whole drawer. So it, it all is going to be protected anyway. So that's great. So I'm just going to put it on here quickly. You want to move fairly quick because that wood's going to start absorbing. So just get it on there. You don't have to go all the way down right now. You can do that after you get your paper on. If you have to sit down your supplies first, do it. But now I'm just going to lay, lay it on there and make sure it's kind of straight. And give it just to smooth it down with your hands. I really don't mind wrinkles at all on this piece. It, it all plays into the weathered, rough French cottage. In this case, we not, might even say Western or not really Western, I don't know. So you see, I'm just coating all the paper with top coat and I'm going in the same direction so that while I'm doing this, it's kind of smoothing it out. And then I'm going to go ahead and finish the whole drawer side. So it's going to make the drawer a little bit darker because you're protecting it with top coat. Nothing wrong with that. Okay. So that's, that's one side. Wipe off any excess if you need to. Now, because I'm going to be doing the other side, I'm going to do this one a little different because I can't, I don't want to put this, the side, other side onto us onto the stool, so let me move back. So we're gonna work sideways now. <clears throat> okay, so same idea, but we're just working a little differently because I don't want the stool. There's a lot of cracks on the sides. This is not, it's funny because I bought two pieces at an estate sale, both of the piece I just showed you earlier and this one at an estate sale. But this one seemed like it was gonna be the, the nicest of the two and it wound up being the most work. And a lot of it's because the wood is a little older and brittle. So I had to do a few more repairs than I was expecting. So you don't always have to work um, flat. Get this one on here. This is the smallest of the four drawers. This one's five inches versus seven inches tall. So there we go, we laid it down. Let me give it a quick smooth in my hand. And then right in there with the top coat. Once this dries, it's protected, it's secure. If it scratches, it's just gonna look like part, it, it, it's gonna look like part of the piece anyway, but the top coat's gonna help. So it has a, to a coat of top coat underneath and a coat of top coat on top. But this is how I use and work with the decoupage papers. So the piece that I showed last night or a while ago, same technique with that decoupage paper, okay? So just rip, tear, apply. On this piece, I also used copper on that top as well, uh, would you bend molding? So it has the same techniques I did tonight, but that one has uh, copper as well. So you can see how it can all really work together.
Okay, so that all I have to do now is set this to the side. I have a table over here that, and if you missed the beginning, I'll just show you this is a drawer that I did earlier today, totally dry, ripped edge, and it, it's a little bit longer, but everything else I cut square. So that's an, it's a nice look, you know, they're probably rarely gonna see this edge, but if they do, it's okay. It's purposely ripped to make it look authentic. Now I will tell you one thing you can do is you could, these are the knobs, you could decoupage paper the knobs, that'd be kind of cool, but uh, I'll probably, I'm, I'm not sure if I'll do that, but that's, that is something that you should try. So we could keep going, um, but I think you get the idea. And I'd love for you to follow me on social media. Stay tuned to see this piece completed. You have the inside scoop on exactly how I accomplished it. So if you have any questions, definitely leave those in the comments. And uh, when you see this done, you go, I watched that live, I know how I did it. But I'd love for you to try it and let me know. Maybe share some pictures with Dick Spell and myself. I used a lot of products tonight and I'm trying to encourage you guys to use multiple products to, all, to achieve a unique, one-of-a-kind look with Dixie Bell. So I had a lot of fun doing that. I know it was fast, we were all over the place, but I'm excited to keep this thing going and I hope you uh, stick around with me uh, until the end as far as uh, seeing this completed here in the next few days. I think that's it tonight. Thank you so much for hanging out with me and uh, let some others know of the video you watched tonight. Maybe give them a holler, let them know uh, what we did tonight. Thanks so much for watching. I'm Aaron with Bowtie Treasures. I'm a content creator for Dixie Bell. Thank you so much for watching. Y'all have a great weekend. Do something creative. Take care. That's the end of the show. Make sure you subscribe and ring the bell before you go. Bye.